Hi everybody, it's Annette. Welcome back to Cotto Verdi. Today I'm going to show you where we're going to put the new pergola and it's going to be over the large flower bed that we created last year and unfortunately what it means is we have to move some of the plants that I've put in, particularly a large lilac that was beautiful and is about to flower in the next month but there's no way around it. We have to move the lilac in order to get the pergola up and we're also going to have to sort out the irrigation because the irrigation's running the whole way along the bed and we're going to have to dig down underneath the path where the pergola is going to go. Um, so there are quite a few things that we need to do and that's what we're doing today. So this is the huge flower bed that we created last year. Basically removed all the weeds, planted a few things in it, ran the irrigation, and mended the soil um, and yeah that's about all we did. But I'll show you where the lilac needs to move and where the path's going to go and why. Okay, I'm not sure how this is going to come out, but I don't know if you can see like the ribbons. I don't know if you can see the ribbons um, on the lawn. It's actually not a lawn at all, it's just weeds. <laughs> but it kind of looks like a lawn because we mow it. Um, but there's no grass there other than weed grass. Um, but anyway, so we have a flower bed here. And then what we're going to do is create a path and then the stuff that is inside the luminescent ribbon is going to be a new flower bed. So there'll be a path and then flower bed on either side. And actually, I think um, one of my friends has suggested that we make the path a bit wider. It's a metre at the moment, but it probably needs to be a metre and a half. So the flower bed will move slightly, um, but as it comes down here, the reason there's a triangle at the end is because this bed closest to us actually is going to turn into a triangle in order for the path to run straight. And then as it runs straight, when it hits this large flower bed here, that's where the pergola is going to go. So the pergola is going to be at the end of the path here. And I'm looking at it now and just wondering whether we definitely need to move the lilac and there's a possibility we don't. So there's a lilac and a sunesia just here and I thought that we would have to move those but we do need to do a bit more of measuring and taping just to figure out where the flower beds are going. Uh, so that's what we're going to do now. So we need to go down the other end and make them half a metre and a half. just do it by eye, literally. It's too big for us, we can't do it any other way. What we have at the moment is the path marked out in red. We're just going to mark out the new flower bed now. On the far side here, you can see these are the flower beds, the new flower beds. This is the path down the middle. 
Am I even pointing in the right direction? No idea. Um, but there's um, a spirea that needs to move. It's been in there a few years. And there's also a gorgeous viburnum, which is going to flower soon, and that needs to move. If we move them today and water them a lot, hopefully they'll be all right. But actually, I don't have to move the lilac, which is amazing news. So we're back, it's a new day. It started snowing yesterday, so we couldn't do any recording. So we abandoned moving the plants so that we could record it today. Let's move some plants. Why are you laughing at me? <laughs> Richard is now criticizing my methods. What's wrong with my methods? It's snowing. I have been asked to stop. Richard wants to do it all. So we're trying to get a really decent sized root ball. So hopefully this shrub doesn't realize that it's been moved. Unfortunately, we never dug this bed when we planted it. So it's really stony. So when you're moving a shrub, the important thing is to dig all the way around it. Don't just try and yank from one side because you'll break all sorts of roots. So dig all the way around and loosen it. We've moved the shrub it's really important to water it in water in really thoroughly flood it we've also sprinkled some fish blood and bone which is a plant food that we use around our shrubs every year and we've sprinkled that all around the shrub to make sure that it's got some food and then we're going to mulch it to make sure that the moisture stays in don't just water your shrub once um, you need to keep watering it throughout the season make sure that it settles in make sure that it's always got some water to drink because otherwise it's just not going to root in well um, but if you move your shrub like this you should be absolutely fine I also just want to mention that um, hopefully you could see in the video that it's really important that you make sure you bury your shrub to the same level that it was previously so you need to make sure that the soil level is not higher up the trunk and also that your roots aren't exposed so don't plant it proud unless your area floods I suppose but try to plant it at exactly the same level so we tried once and then realized that it wasn't the hole wasn't deep enough so we dug it out a bit more and then planted it again and uh, anyway hopefully I'll get a really good display from this shrub and it won't even notice that it's moved <laughs> We've just dug up a spirea and it seemed to have created a second plant, which is excellent. But you'll see that we try to take off quite a lot of the soil because there's ground elder in that bed and we didn't want to transfer ground elder to this other bed where we've got rid of all the ground elder. So that's why we took off quite a lot of soil. I wouldn't normally do that, but we just wanted to make sure there weren't any ground elder roots in there at all. And now we're just going to do exactly the same thing. We've split them. So there's sort of the little ones going in another spot and we're just going to plant them, water them in really well and give them a little feed and mulch. And then we'll just keep watering uh, throughout the next few months to make sure they settle in properly. So you will see that we're planting the spirea in an area where it's quite weedy, but actually we have dug out this bed in the past and then it just got weedy again and we didn't get on top of it. Anyway, so we're planting We've weeded the area where we're planting them and then we're going to spend the rest of the weekend weeding around them to make sure the weeds don't encroach but the mulch will definitely help with suppressing those weeds. The mulch we're using is the Melcourt composted fine bark and I really like this. It is a fantastic mulch and it's endorsed by the Royal Horticultural Society which is not actually the reason I use it, it's just the mulch that we really like and as you can see it's a fine grade bark mulch which is rich in organic matter. So that's it for this video. We've um, 
measured out where the new path and the new beds are going and we've moved the shrubs that were in the way of the path. Um, what we're not going to get done in this video is putting the pergola up but that'll be the next video hopefully and um, I'll show you that. So, so do subscribe to my channel and hit that bell if you want to be notified when I post a new video because then you'll see this garden as it progresses this season. Anyway thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time because we've had two days of minus four which is below freezing for us. Um, it's below freezing for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Me! I'm just such an idiot. I've got to go and dry my eyes. Sorry? <laughs> to make sure that it stays moist. I'm reluctant to use that word. Make sure that it stays um, damp. sure that it's always wet. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me today. Uh. <laughs> I also just want to mention that um, hopefully you could see in the video that it's really important that you make sure you bury your shrub. Do you subscribe to my channel if you want to see us erecting a pergola. A pergola. <laughs> so do you, I don't know what's wrong with me today. Oh dear.